Good morning. We are glad you're here this morning. And uh, it's wonderful to see all of you here. Like I say, when I was sitting down a while ago and I looked up, there wasn't anybody in here. Now there's uh, several, so we're glad you're here. We're glad those that are online are with us as well. And uh, we've got a little different backdrop for us today. Uh, a lot of handiwork here that's been done. If you've walked through the church today, you've seen all kinds of decorations for Bible school. We're excited about tonight. We'll talk about that a little bit at the end with announcements. But this morning as we start to worship, as we start to sing, this song says, and you can't sing this song because this first line of the chorus says, there's joy in the house of the Lord. So you can't sing there's joy in the house of the Lord with a frown on your face. Okay? So just keep that in mind when you're singing. All right? So help us sing house of the Lord. We worship the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opens the prison doors, he's part in the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes the way. Cause he hung up on that cross. Then he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. If we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Let's sing that again. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Your joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise.
Amen. You may be seated. Again, we're glad you're here this morning. Some of my favorite, favorite verses of the Bible. I'll be reading from Psalms 100. Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Now that the Lord, he is God, it is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for this day. And I thank you for the chance that we had to be in your house this morning. Lord, as we're here, we are not just here to fill a pew. We are not just here to have fellowship with other believers. Lord, we are here to worship you. Lord, you made us. And you... It's a sweet aroma to you to hear us worship you. Lord, I pray this morning as we continue to worship that we focus on you and you alone. Lord, I pray that you would help us to also realize, which is easy for us to forget, that our worship is not just between these four walls. But our worship is where we're at. And it's not just about singing. It's about what we're doing. Wherever we're at. Help us to be reminded of that. Help us to realize that we are worshiping you, whatever we're doing. Lord, again, I thank you for this time. I thank you for the chance that we have to be here this morning. I pray for those that are with us online as well, and thank you for them. And Lord, I pray for those that are on our prayer list. Thank you again for this time, and thank you for the chance that we have to, to be here this morning. And thank you for your love, your mercy, and your forgiveness. Lord, we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. The hymn this morning is another great, great song in our hymnal, one that most of you know, and one of probably one of your favorites. Victory in Jesus, we'll sing all three verses. Please stand as we sing. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about His groaning Of His precious blood atoning Then I repented of my sins and won the victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me i knew him and all my love is due 
him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood i heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see and then i cried dear jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow jesus came and brought to me the victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me and i knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood i heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus my savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me and i knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood You hear me when I call, you are my morning song. Though darkness fills the night, it cannot hide the light. Whom shall I fear? You crush the enemy underneath my feet. You are my sword and shield, though troubles linger still. Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. My strength is in your name, for you alone can save. You will deliver me. Yours is the victory. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side the one who reigns forever he is a friend of mine the god of angel armies is always by my side and nothing formed against me shall stand you hold the whole world near I'm holding on to your promises. You are faithful. You are faithful. And 
Is always by my side, the one who reigns forever. He is a friend of mine, the God of angel armies. Is always by my side, the God of angel armies. Is always by my side. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you that you are always with us. No matter what's going on in our lives, we can, we don't go through it alone. And Lord, as we think about our lives, and as we think about this world, and as we think about the struggles that are going on all across our globe, like in Cuba and other countries. Lord, the one thing we have to remember is you are a living hope. No matter what's going on, no matter what circumstances, you are who we can cling to. Thank you again for the chance that we have to worship you this morning. Be with Brother Dylan this morning. Give him the words to speak. Hide him behind the cross. May it be words that we need to hear. And Lord, not only words that we need to hear, but words that we will live by daily. Lord, I pray if there's somebody here today that doesn't know you, whether it be here or online, or maybe, maybe they've accepted you, but, but they're walking afar off. Or maybe they've got to come and, and pray it for something here at this altar. Lord, help us to make decisions today and not put them off. Lord, I thank you for this time. I thank you for the chance that we have again to be here as a body of believers this morning. Thank you for your, your provision. Thank you that you are our living hope. For we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living. could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my the cross has spoken, I am forgiven, the King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, 
Death has lost its grip on me You have broken every chain There's salvation in your name Jesus Christ, my living hope Hallelujah Praise the one who set me free Hallelujah Death has lost its grip on me You have broken every chain There's salvation in your name Jesus Christ, my living hope Then came the morning That sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me jesus yours is a victory Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free, hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free, hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living Oh God, you're my living hope. I want to do one more time. I want to do without any music. I want to do the chorus one more time. Hallelujah. Today's the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, children will go out for children's church. Well, it is a joy to worship the Lord together with you all this morning, especially on this Sunday as we are gearing up to kick off our VBS tonight at 5.30. Uh, and it's not very often that I get to preach with this background behind me. So I'm excited for our VBS. Be praying for that tonight. This morning, we will be looking at Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, if you would take your copy of the Word of God. And turn there with me, Ephesians chapter 6, and we'll be looking at verses 14 through 23 this morning. The title of our message is Dressed for Battle, Dressed for Battle. We've now come to the end of this wonderful epistle, the book of Ephesians, that is packed with so much theological truth and also practical application for how we live the Christian life, how we are to walk in these good works that God has ordained for us to do. He's told us how we live a spirit-controlled life. He's told us how we live in relation to our spouses, 
how husbands should treat their wives and how wives should treat their husbands, how parents should treat their children, how Christian employees should view their jobs. And we've seen Paul show us that all of these areas of our lives, these are all areas that we need the Lord's strength. We cannot live the Christian life in our own power and our own ability. We need Him. We need His strength. And beginning at the beginning of chapter 6, we really see the summation of the entire book of Ephesians. This is what Paul has been building towards throughout the first several chapters. Starting with our union in Christ, that we are in Him. He says that over and over again, in Him, in Him, in Him. And he's told us that Christ has saved us, He's brought us from death to life, and He's seated us with Him in the heavenly places. And he says in verse 10, Finally be strengthened by the Lord and by His vast strength. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of darkness, against evil spiritual forces, in the heavens. Paul wants us to know that there is a real spiritual battle that is raging around us every single day. It is a battle in our homes. It's a battle in our marriages. It's a battle in the way we raise our children. It's a battle at our workplace. And it's even a battle in the church. We have a real spiritual enemy and we need not fear him But Paul wants us to be aware of him. Paul wants us to be prepared for the battle. And this morning, as we look at verses 14 through 23, we'll see Paul describe this armor that he tells us we need to put on if we're going to fight in this battle. Ephesians chapter 6, beginning with verse 14, and I would ask if you would please rise to honor the reading of the Word of God. Ephesians 6, beginning with verse 14, this is what the Word of God says. Stand therefore with truth, like a belt around your waist, righteousness like armor on your chest, and your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace. In every situation, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray at all times in the Spirit. With every prayer and request, stay alert. With all perseverance and intercession for all the saints, pray also for me, that the message may be given to me when I open my mouth, and to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. For this I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I might be bold enough to speak about it as I should. Tychus, our dearly loved brother and faithful servant in the Lord, will tell you all the news about me so that you may be informed. I'm sending him to you for this very reason, to let you know how we are to encourage your hearts. Peace to the brothers and sisters. Love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who have undying love for our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word. And Lord, as we look at this text this morning, remind us that we're not fighting for victory, we're fighting from victory. You have won the battle, and you did it on Calvary's cross. You have crushed the head of the serpent, and Lord, you have provided everything that we need to live a spirit-filled life. We can't do it in our own strength. We can't do it in our own abilities, no matter how gifted and no matter how talented or powerful we may think we are, we need you. 
And so, Father, I pray that as believers, we would take up this armor and that we would put it on each and every day, understanding that ultimately it's your armor. We thank you for the victory that you have secured in Christ. We thank you that you have brought salvation to a lost and dying world. And because of that, we have hope. And we have a message to proclaim. Help us to be faithful to do that. And Lord, we pray that if there's someone in our midst or someone watching online who's never had their sins forgiven, they've never trusted in the risen Savior that is Jesus Christ, we pray that this morning they would bow the knee to Christ in repentance and faith. Father, we pray that you would use this time to be glorified. It's in your Son's name we pray. Amen. I shared with you all last week that my son loves superheroes. Really, Nora does too. And we're having an Avengers birthday party for Chandler uh, next month where we're all going to dress up. He's going to be the Hulk and I'm going to be Captain America. We're very excited about that. But we actually dress up a lot. In fact, we have in our playroom closet, we have a bunch of different superhero costumes. And from time to time, the kids will come to us and they'll ask if we can dress up in those costumes. And we'll just dress up like superheroes and we'll play superheroes right there in the living room. And I'm going to be Captain America next month at his birthday party. But that's not the only costume I have because I also have an Iron Man costume. And, Cord, I think we have a, uh, a picture there, if you want to... There we are. Um, I'm telling you, man, how, you, how cool is your pastor? You, you get a, part superhero. <laughs> but I also have an Iron Man costume. And I tell you that because when you think about superheroes, Iron Man is kind of unique. Because for almost every superhero that you can think of, there's almost always a moment in time in, in their life where they discover their superpower. Something happens to them, they have this uh, life-altering moment where they discover what their power is. You might think of Spider-Man as he gets bit by a radioactive spider and now all of a sudden he can shoot webs and he can climb up buildings. Or Captain America as he takes the super soldier serum and now all of a sudden he's a super soldier, he has superhuman abilities. But the thing that is unique about Iron Man is in and of himself, he really doesn't have any superpowers. His power, his strength, comes from this armor that he has to put on. It comes from this suit, this external source of power that he has to put on. And without it, he would be helpless. He couldn't fight the villains without his suit. Well, Paul tells us that we're in a battle. We are involved in spiritual warfare every single day. And there is armor, there is a suit that we need to put on. And that suit, that armor, is not our own. It is the armor of God, our victorious King. And we see that language all throughout the Bible. Throughout the Old Testament, God's described as a warrior, and we're told of this armor that the Messiah wears. In Isaiah 11, a very familiar messianic passage, in Isaiah 11 it says, Then a shoot will grow up from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, a spirit of wisdom, an understanding, a spirit of counsel and strength, a spirit of knowledge of the fear of the Lord. His delight will be in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes. He will not execute justice by what he hears with his ears. But he will judge the poor righteously and execute justice for the oppressed of the land. He will strike the land with a scepter from his mouth 
and he will kill the wicked with a command from his lips. Righteousness will be a belt around his hips. Faithfulness will be a belt around his waist. Also in Isaiah, in Isaiah 59, we read, He put on righteousness as body armor, a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on garments of vengeance for clothing, and he wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak. Remember, this is the Apostle Paul writing this. He was a Pharisee. He knew the Old Testament Scriptures better than anyone else. And this is what Paul has in mind as he pens Ephesians chapter 6. This armor that we are to put on, this armor that we are to stand firm in, it is the Lord's armor. It is the Messiah's armor. It is His battle gear that we are to clothe ourselves in. And as we get to verse 14, he describes this armor for us. He says, stand therefore with truth like a belt around your waist, righteousness like armor on your chest, and your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace. In every situation, take up the shield of faith to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You notice the first piece of armor that he mentions there is he says, stand with truth like a belt around your waist. You know, I was watching an awards show several years ago and Oprah Winfrey was receiving the award. And as she got up to give her acceptance speech, said in that speech was the most important thing that you need to do in this life is for you to find your truth and to live out your truth. And you know, we hear that a lot in our culture today that when it comes to truth well you just need to find your truth and live out your truth whatever that looks like whatever that might be you need to find your truth and you can have your truth and I can have my truth and we can all have our own truth well, that sounds that sounds nice that sounds good But the problem is, is if your definition of truth doesn't line up with what God has said is true, then it's not true. God is our ultimate standard of truth. What he says is truth. And Paul has put an emphasis on truth throughout this entire epistle. He's told us in chapter 1 that truth is revealed in the gospel. He's told us in chapter 4 that as believers, we need to be a truth-speaking people. We need to speak the truth. And so as believers, we buckle on this piece of the Messiah's armor. We put on the belt of truth. In the ancient world, the belt was important because the belt really held everything else together. They would often tuck their robe or toga. They would tuck that in their belt, they would cinch that up if they needed to run, but the belt was critical because it held everything together. And so Paul is telling us, cinch up your belt, put on the belt of truth that holds everything else together. We have to speak truth in a day and age when our culture tells us that there is no such thing as objective truth. We have to be a people of truth in our language, a people of truth in our behaviors, and a people of truth in our attitude. We put on the truth of Christ every single day. We have to remind ourselves every single day what Christ has done for us, the truth of the gospel. So we put on the belt of truth. But notice, secondly, Paul says, righteousness, 
like armor on your chest. Your translation may say the breastplate of righteousness. And Paul, again, he's drawing this language from Isaiah 59, where he says the Lord puts on righteousness like a breastplate. The belt of truth holds everything together, and this breastplate of righteousness, it protects us. A breastplate in the ancient world for a soldier, it would protect their heart, it would protect their most vital organs. And we are protected from our enemy, not because of our own righteousness, but because of the perfect righteousness of Jesus Christ. For the Christian, for the believer, it is His perfect righteousness that is imputed to us. When Jesus died on the cross, He died the death that we deserved. He paid the penalty for our sin that we should have paid. And now for the believer, when a Christian stands before a holy God, we stand before Him, not based upon our own righteousness, our own good deeds, but we stand before Him based upon the righteousness of Jesus Christ. It is His righteousness that we put on like a breastplate to protect us from the attacks of the enemy. And so when Satan, when the accuser, when the enemy comes and he shoots his arrows of accusation, or maybe he brings up our past sins, our past failures to try and condemn us, we have to be reminded that the righteousness that we can stand before a holy God is not our own. It is the righteousness of Christ. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. It is his righteousness and notice in verse 15, he says, Our feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace. When I lived in Louisville on campus at Bible College, we often, every week, twice a week, we had uh, these, really they were worship services for the students. And we would all travel over to chapel and we would have worship songs, we would have a guest preacher who would be there and preach a message. But as we went over to chapel that night, it would, it would just look like a mass exodus of people. Like every student on the campus was heading over to the chapel. And one night we were heading over for worship, and it was in the middle of the winter, it was freezing cold, and I was at the very front of the group of students of hundreds of hundreds of students, I was at the very front. I don't know how I ended up there, but I was. And I was wearing my cowboy boots. And I think there was maybe about two people in downtown Louisville that wore cowboy boots. Uh, and that was me and JT Jones. Uh, I think we were the only people that wore cowboy boots in all of Louisville. But I was that night. And as we got right up to the uh, worship service there, me in front of all of those students, I hit a patch of ice in my cowboy boots and I slipped and I fell right in front of the entire student body. And I was perfectly fine, but the embarrassment hurt, I think, more than anything else. Because as soon as I went down, you could just hear the shrieks. All the girls were just, oh my goodness, and everybody was looking to see what had happened and I was trying to scurry up as quick as I could to try to play it off and I'm like falling on my way back up in my cowboy boots. But you know, I learned that night, depending on the terrain you're in, the type of shoes that you're wearing, it matters. It matters. It's important. And think about this when it comes to a soldier. Paul is using this language, this imagery. If you're a soldier, it doesn't matter if you have a helmet a sword, a shield, if your feet are exposed, then you are in trouble. You don't want to have your feet exposed as a soldier. And Paul says, believer, if you're going to enter into this battle, this spiritual warfare, you better have your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace. 
We have a message to proclaim. We have a message to herald to a lost and dying world. And it is the gospel of peace. It is the good news that God has sent His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, 100% God and 100% man. He has sent Him and He lived a perfect life that we could never live. He never sinned, not even once. And He went to Calvary's cross and He died for the sins of His people. They put Him in the tomb and three days later, the tomb was empty. He rose again from the dead. And now the scriptures tell us that if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. That all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can have peace with God. This is our message that we want to proclaim to a lost world. This is the message that we want to share. That's why we're doing VBS. That's why we have events at the church. That's why we have a hunter's breakfast. We have a message to proclaim. And it is the gospel of Jesus Christ. We offer people something that no other religion can offer. And that is peace with God. The Jehovah's Witness cannot offer you peace with God. Mormonism cannot offer you peace with God. Roman Catholicism cannot offer you peace with God. Atheism can't offer you peace with God. It is only the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is our message. That is why we have to have our feet sandaled with readiness to share this message. We're going to do just that in a couple months in September. We're going to be taking play, part in something called the gospel to every home. And we're going to go to every house in Seabury. And we're going to share the gospel with every home in our town. And I encourage you to be praying about that. And if you want to be a part of that, to talk with me. But this is what we're about. This is why God has placed us here to proclaim this message, the gospel of peace. He says in verses 16 through 17, In every situation, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all of the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Paul says, take the shield of faith. And this shield that he is describing here, he's not describing some small, little, tiny, circular shield. He's describing a massive shield that a soldier would carry. A shield that would be big enough to cover that soldier's entire body and to protect them from the enemy. And he says, take the shield of faith. We take that shield of faith when we believe the promises of God. When we believe what God has said about us and what He has done for us. We take that shield of faith. But he also says, take the helmet of salvation. Take the helmet of salvation. Roman helmets, during the time in which Paul would have been writing this, they were very heavy. They were made of bronze and iron. And for many people, you wouldn't even be able to wear this helmet unless you had extremely strong neck muscles because it was so heavy, it was so thick. And if you had that helmet on, it was almost impenetrable. If you had that helmet on, your head would be safe from attack. And Paul says, as God's people, we put on the helmet of salvation. We put on the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. In 1 Thessalonians, Paul calls it a helmet of the hope of salvation. We put on that hope that we have in Christ, that we serve a risen Savior. We remind ourselves of that every single day, that no matter how dark things may look in this world, or no matter how bad things might be falling apart around us in our lives, we have the hope that Jesus Christ is on His throne, and we belong to Him. 
Our king is reigning. Lastly, he says, take up the sword of the Spirit. That is the Word of God. We take up this sword. Sword is really the only offensive weapon that the Apostle Paul describes here. But it is a powerful weapon. And it is infinitely more powerful than any weapon Satan or this world could ever conjure up. The sword of the Spirit. That is the Word of God. We need the Word of God. We need to be reading the Word of God every single day. We need to be growing in our knowledge of the Word of God as we grow in spiritual maturity. Our hearts ought to cry out for the Word of God, ought to yearn for the Word of God in the same way a newborn baby cries for the milk of its mother. We ought to have a yearning, a desire, a hunger for God's Word. It's one of the reasons that Sunday school and Bible study groups are so important so that you have that extra time each week to dive into the Word of God every week with other believers to grow in your knowledge of the Word of God. What did Jesus do when he was tempted by Satan? He quoted Scripture. He quoted Scripture. We need the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit that is the Word of God. And notice how Paul caps all of this armor off in verses 18 through 20. He's told us about this armor. He's told us about the belt of truth that we have to put on, the shield of faith that we have to have our feet sandaled with readiness to share the gospel of peace. We have to put on the helmet of salvation. We have to take the sword of the Spirit that is the Word of God. And now he says in verse 18, Pray at all times in the Spirit with every prayer and request and stay alert with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. Pray for also for me that the message may be given to me when I open my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. For this I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I might be bold enough to speak about it as I should. You know, I am I'm fairly young, I would say. Many of you might say that. Every time we have uh, a cyclist show up, as I introduce myself to them, many of them say, uh, I tell them, you know, I'm the pastor here, and they kind of stand back like they don't believe me for a second. They're like, aren't you like 20 or something? How are you the pastor here? I don't know. But I can still remember a time before cell phones, and I'm proud of that. And when I was a little boy, my dad would take me hunting with him. We would take these walkie-talkies. And he would take me to my deer stand and set me there. We weren't really that far apart. I couldn't see him from my stand. But I had that walkie-talkie. And I remember if I would ever get scared, I would hit that walkie-talkie and I would talk to him. And sometimes it would just be about something random just because I was getting a little nervous and I just wanted to hear his voice. I'd say, Dad, I see a squirrel. And he'd be like, that's great. No, leave me alone. There's deer here. <laughs> but it was such a comfort. I remember when I could pick up that walkie-talkie and I knew that my dad was going to be on the other side of that, that he would hear me. How much of a comfort should it be to us as the people of God that when we pray, when we talk, to our Heavenly Father that He hears, that He is there. Not only do we have this armor that is God's armor that we put on, but we have prayer. We can pray to our Father and He hears us. We're not fighting this battle alone. We're not fighting this battle alone. It is His armor. When we pray, He hears us. He is there. When we put on the belt of truth, when we have our feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel, when we take up the shield of faith, when we take up the sword of the Spirit, the only reason that we can do that is because 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ laid His weapons aside, and He willingly died on the cross 
for our sins. And by his death on the cross, he secured our ultimate victory. Victory in Jesus. Have you trusted in this victorious king? Do you know him? Have you believed by faith that Jesus died for your sins and that he rose again victoriously? And if you have, if you are a believer, are you putting on the armor of God every single day? This is a conscious choice. Every single day when we get up, we're engaged in a spiritual war that is raging all around us that we can't see with our eyes, but it is real. And we have to put this armor on and we have to be ready. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you have secured for us in Christ salvation, that you have been victorious over death, hell, and the grave. We serve a risen Savior. And Lord, I, so often we are tempted to get discouraged maybe because of what we see happening around us in our world, evil around us, maybe because of just circumstances that are occurring in our lives. Lord, help us to be reminded that we're not fighting for victory, we're fighting from victory. That you are on your throne right now, you are reigning, you are in control, and we belong to you. Help us to be reminded it is your armor that we're putting on. We can't do it in our own strength. We can't do it in our own power. Only in Christ. Lord, I pray that for everyone here this morning that they know you as Savior and Lord. But if there's someone here who doesn't, I pray as we get ready to have our invitation that if you would convict their heart Show them their sin and their need of a Savior that is Christ. I pray that they might come to trust Him for the first time. Lord, maybe there's another decision that's resting on someone's heart this morning. I pray that they would make it now. We ask all this in the precious name of Your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand as we sing, Take My Life and Let It Be Consecrated. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my hands and let them move. At the impulse of thy love, Lord, I give my life to thee, thine forevermore to be. Lord, I give my life to thee, thine forevermore to be. Take my feet and let them be Swift and beautiful for Thee Take my voice and let them sing Always only for my King Lord, I give my life to Thine forevermore to be. Lord, I give my life to Thee. Thine forevermore to be. Thank you all so much for coming out to worship the Lord together with us this morning. I want to challenge each and every one of you to pray for our Bible school this week. Would you do that? To pray for our workers, pray for our children that we're going to have 
beginning here tonight at 5.30. What a wonderful, wonderful outreach opportunity and just an opportunity for our children to grow in their knowledge of the Word of God. So please be praying for our Bible school and our Bible school workers and our children that come tonight. We will not have our normal adult Bible study because of Bible school starting tonight. Uh, and I also want to say that we have a, uh, a special visitor with us this morning. We have uh, a cyclist uh, with us, Ken, and so we are so excited. Our cyclist ministry is such a wonderful ministry. Uh, we have folks all summer long from the East Coast, the West Coast, all over the world that come to our little town, and we get to share the good news of the gospel with them. So what a blessing that is. We love our cyclists, and we're so thankful for each and every one of them. Also, before Monty finishes with a couple more announcements, if you're visiting with us this morning, if you would, on your way out, fill out one of those uh, first-timer cards just so that we have a record of you being here and that we can minister and, and serve you better. Monty. If you'll have a seat real quick. I'm going to do my announcements to give you the ambiance of tonight's uh, Bible school. Uh, one thing is I don't want you to forget, offering plate down here, not over there today, it's, it's right here on this table. You need to find where the offering plate is. Um, uh, softball this week, Lord's Supper next Sunday, and Tara, is there anything we need to know about Bible school tonight? 5.30? 5. Workers be here at 5. Now, here's the thing. If you, have, uh, you haven't decided this week or haven't talked to Tara about working, she'll take you. Be here at 5. We'll find a spot for you. It's always need workers, that's for sure. Okay? And one thing else. Uh, Cord, would you put that picture back up on the screen? I don't know if you noticed Iron Man, but Iron Man is wearing Argyle socks. I don't know if you all noticed that or not. I've never seen Iron Man wear Argyle socks. Uh, but again, like I say, if you can be here tonight, please do so. Uh, because here's the great thing. You'll get a great blessing in helping. Because, I don't know, but you always get excited about Bible school, just being a part of it. Uh, I can still remember as a kid all the, the certain music, Betty, that was played for Bible school. Uh, and eating peanut butter and crackers uh, was always the, the, the chosen food for Bible school. And, and red Kool-Aid. So, uh, but uh, again, if you can be a part, please do so tonight. All right, any other announcements? If you see a bobcat in the Welcome Center, please don't shoot it. Uh, it is not real. It is my dad's. So, you see a bobcat in the Welcome Center... Please don't shoot it. But again, we, we encourage you, bring your children out tonight. We're going to have a great time at VBS. Monty, would you close us in prayer this sure. morning? Let's stand as we pray. Please stand. Dear God, I thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for your word. And Lord, how it can be such a great weapon for us as we go out each and every day. Lord, I pray that you would be with us as we go from here. But I especially pray for Bible school this evening and this week, from Sunday to Thursday. Be with all that have a part. Be with kids that maybe right now don't even know for sure if they're coming or not. Put a situation where they'll be encouraged to come or have a way to come. They can walk or however that they can get here. Lord, that be as many children as it could be, they could hear your gospel this week. Lord, I thank you for all that have already done a lot of work to prepare for tonight and for this week. Pray that you be with all those teachers, all the workers that will have an impact on these kids as they come to hear and to sing and to, to play and to, to eat and to do crafts. Lord, that they would see from us your love. And only would they see it from us, but they would also hear it this week and all that's done. Thank you again for this time. Thank you again for the opportunity that we have to serve you. Go with us, for we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen.